Are you ready to catch beast man -itis? Rawr! Hi, I'm Captain Kira, and I'm back with another one day build to despatch the fort. This build is mostly a closet cosplay, so today we'll be making the accessories, basically giving us beast man -itis. So we're making gloves, the ears, the mask if you want it, the tail, and boot cups. This is mostly using fleece to build the accessories, and the rest of the stuff just came from my closet. And other than stepping for the tail, and a little bit of warble for the ears, a piece of bone as well, that's pretty much everything you need. So let's get started. The easiest way to make gloves is to trace your hands on a piece of parchment paper, fingers splayed. Iron the wax side of your stencil to your fabric. Pin together your stencil in two layers of fabric, right sides together. Use a stretch stitch to sew around your tracing, leaving extra space if your fabric isn't particularly stretchy. Tear away the wax paper, then trim your glove. The closer to your seam you trim, the less bulky your fingers will be. Fleece only has a bit of stretch, but this technique works great with spandex. Measure how long you want your tail to be, then sketch out your shape. Cut out your template and test it in the mirror. When you're happy with the shape and size, cut it out of two layers of fabric. I want the blue layer to overlay the brown, so I trimmed this edge close to the final shape, but left ample space on the brown underlay for ease when top stitching. Join the tail to its tip on each piece before sewing both sides together. For a more 3D shape, consider adding a diamond shaped panel between the underside seams, but I've only got so much stuffing, so flatter it is. Also, if you've saved your scraps, they make good filler, so you might want to wait till the end to stuff. Hand stitch your top seam shut and fold the top over, or add another piece of fabric to create a loop to slide a belt through. So, for your tail, you can just slip it through a belt. If you tuck the end at the back, it won't create any lumps in your shirt. For your ears, it's more trial and error. Make sure you're happy with your template before moving on. Because I wanted my ears to curl, it needed to be much wider than I originally planned. This is a scrap project, so I stubbornly made that one piece of warbler in particular that's been floating around for months into the shape I need, but if you've got a whole sheet, you can just trace your ear template. Then cut your fabric, two white or pink inner ears and two brown outer ears. Pin each outside piece to its inside piece. Sew along the top edges, leaving the part by your head open. Trim seams and flip them right side out. If your warbler fits inside, you can start heating it, but not in your fabric, that's a fire hazard. When the warble is warm and soft, you can carefully place it in the ear pocket and start to shape it. Hold it or support it until it cools, or it'll lose its shape. Since my scraps were white, I'm painting the insides. I had leftovers of a mix of pink acrylic and fabric medium, so that's what I'm using. Also, my closest paint to brown was gold, so I mixed it with a few drops of black to blend in the edges with the fabric. While that dries, let's start the leg warmers. Measure your ankle, the desired top of your leg warmer, and the distance between them. Then transfer to paper. Test against your leg and draw on your fur lines. Fold your stencil and cut two pieces long folds. Sew one seam along the back. If you're using fleece, you won't need to hem. For your mask, grab some paper and press it close to your face. Then very gently draw where you feel your eyes and cheekbones, and where you think the mask should go. It won't be right. Try to cut compromising between the right and left tracing, and test your template in the mirror until you're happy with it. Then transfer your template to the craft foam. Heat it up in a well-ventilated space, and after making sure it's not too hot, form it to your face. Hold it until it cools. This can take a while. Paint your mask, if it's not already brown. Again, I've only got gold. So this one covers up 
a lot of my eye makeup and eyes in general, so I'll probably be going with the understripe. To apply our mask, we're going to add a couple drops of spirit gum. Crack, that is real. If you can't open your spirit gum, eyelash glue should also work. The bridge of your nose and then the side corners. It doesn't take a lot of gum, and the less you put on, the easier it will be to remove. This is already probably way too much. Pinch it in to try and avoid getting it in your hair. This of course would look better if you actually had brown paint. The wig I'm using was a $10 L.E. Mill Sino Alice wig, Impulse bought years ago, untouched, and will be styled off screen. If you want to color your tips, Copic markers work great. I only have Prismacolor. They're alright. Then since the Prismacolors were out, I took three colors to define the cartilage of the inner ear. Tuscan red, pink, and peach. kind of regret it right now. And when it's on my ears, it's gonna look pretty good. I'm just going to sew on some hair clips. So a few of the cosplays I'm planning to do in the future require ears, so I thought this might be a good practice because I'd never tried them with Warbla on the inside and I can practice painting them a little better than usual. So even though these ones are fleece and I'm hoping to use Bofa in the future, there's still like things you can learn from any project. If I think I need more practice, I might try a Nazna, but I didn't have a white hoodie. But I do have most glorious and hideous of pink leg warmers, so it's so pretty. Also, these contacts are like negative four off from my actual prescription. Thanks for watching!